Welcome everyone. It is the three o'clock hour and this is your Ruth moment. So come on in everyone. Uh, I hope that you have set apart this time uh, to steal away for your own personal gain so that you can be refilled and refueled for the journey that your Heavenly Father has set for you. I'm going to take just a quick moment and let everyone know that I am here. I hope you have a pen and paper, your favorite drink, your favorite snack. I hope that this time is a blessed time for you, that you get revelation and confirmation of uh, the things that your Heavenly Father has uh, set you apart to do for you to impact the world around you for the better, um, to have a positive impact to be a woman of influence who walks in royalty, that you rule and you reign in your life um, the way that you were designed to. I hope that this time is a blessed time for you um, and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, the word today. I hope that many miracle signs and wonders follows his word. So come on in everyone, come on in. I'm just tagging some friends. Hopefully, uh, people have set apart this time. I've been doing this for over a few months now, so I hope that everyone joins me. I hope this is a word that's on time and in season and that you don't miss this divine opportunity. Come on in, everyone. Come on in. Thanks for your patience. I'm just tagging our family and our friends. Uh, the other queens, join me, join me. Come on in, come on in. <laughs> Thank you again for your patience. I am Lakeisha Lewis, one of the founders of the Ruth Group. And this is your Ruth Moments. This is a time for you to come and get encouragement and to know that you are loved and that you are special, that God has gifted you with talents and treasures that you are to impact the world around you with. That it's okay to step out in faith and to be that woman God has created you to be. And that you can be everything that he, he created you to be. He, you can have all the gifts and the promises and the treasures and the blessings that he's promised you in his word. And for you to take hold of that word and to declare it and to, and to come into agreement with it. Hey mom, hey Tracy, beautiful ladies, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you. Hey, Nancy, love you, ladies. Blessings, blessings in abundance. I speak life, love, peace, joy, strength, that whatever you have need of, that in this hour, it will be that. If, even if you're catching the replay, I pray over you as well, that it will uh, you will come across this video at just the right time. You are being connected to the right season, the right people. So come on in, everyone. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I'm just waiting for uh, some more people to hop on. Thank you guys for your faithfulness. It, it really does bless me that you guys take time out of your busy schedules. Saturdays are usually pretty busy for everyone. So thank you for making this a priority, Linda. Thank you, Kiona. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing, that you join me, that you bring your faith and it comes and it comes into contact with my faith. And we have an, a faith explosion that our Heavenly Father presence shows up right in the room, right where we are. And he meets our needs and he gives us a divine word and he gives us revelation and he gives us truth and he gives us hope that tomorrow will be better, um, that we are blessed already, that we can be satisfied in our now and, and know that tomorrow is already taken care of. So come on in, everyone. Um, the title of this teaching message, uh, this prophetic word for you today, Kiona, is your reward is waiting. Linda Jean, your reward is waiting. Mom, your reward is waiting. Um, Nancy, your reward is waiting. Sophia, your reward is waiting. Uh, thank you uh, for coming in and joining me. I'm going to just do a quick recap because as we 
got into 2021, it was about us taking this journey together, us leveling up together, that a lot of times we don't have the community that we need right in our immediate family or in our immediate circle or even with our co-workers, but that we need to become a community, that we need to come together to encourage and uplift each other. And that's what the Ruth Group is designed to do. The name Ruth actually means friendship, companionship. Ruth was a companion to Naomi and she dedicated herself to Naomi and to Naomi's God and to Naomi's people that she was going to forsake. Thank you, Kenya. I'm trying to get it. Uh, um, that she was willing to forsake everything that she had known to go after and to serve and to be who God created her to be. It was her confession that set the course for her path to, to the abundant path that she walked in. And so we are taking this journey together. This path is all about being spirit led. This group is about being spirit led. And a lot of times we struggle with our confidence and, and, and understanding what God is saying to us and to believe that he's actually speaking to us. Sometimes we struggle to hear him because of the distractions and the detours in the past that we have had. We struggle to believe that he's speaking and that we are understanding what he's saying right now in this season. But in order to be on this abundant path, remember there has been two things that he has declared over each and every single one of you women that is a part of the Ruth group. Luke 145 says that you will see a fulfillment of everything that he has promised you because you believe. And so when you take this time out, this is about you strengthening your beliefs. It's reaffirming um, your beliefs in what he has promised you. The things that he's placed on the inside of you, the vision that he's giving you, the talents, the treasures, the placement, where you are in life, whether you are a novice, apprentice, a practitioner, an expert, no matter where you are on your journey with him he wants you to be your faith can always become stronger it can become bolder it can become more courageous you can you can come into more alignment with what he's doing in in, in the season that you're in and um this is all about you being on that path being in alignment or like he said last uh the last couple of weeks is being in tune with holy spirit it's about being in tune with your season and the opportunities that are presenting themselves. It's about you being in tune with the position that you hold right now, that you have been crowned with uh, glory and honor and you are designed to rule and reign in your life right where you are. That there are things that he's placed on the inside of you that you were designed to birth. And until you start to birth those things, birth those things and start to actually flow with uh, the, uh, his spirit, you will always have a void. You will always try to fill it with something that, that actually can't fulfill you. And so this about recognizing and being in tune with your position and to recognize that he has crowned you with honor and power in this season. Your heavenly father has blessed this path and the path and the, the other uh, prophetic word that he gave us was Psalm 65 11 that your year has been crowned with abundance. Your path is dripping in abundance. Your heavenly father has blessed your path. He has blessed the vision and he last week said, go ahead, my daughter. You have given, he has given you the permission to go ahead and move forward in faith, to seek after, to go after everything that he has placed on the inside of you. You're it. He said, now is the time to move forward. He said, you wrote the vision, you made the commitment. Now it's time to take steps towards your promise. Your promise is worth the risk. You have lend lended your imagination to negativity and fear for long enough now is the time to lend your imagination to holy spirit because your promise is worth the risk the ruth anointing if you're a part of this group you you have been blessed with the ruth anointing and you can activate that no, anointing and the ruth anointing will move you to take risk you will be a risk taker you will make faith moves and so last week, he, he wanted us to focus not on what's around us, not our circumstances, not our situations. He wanted us to focus on him. 
that he has already spoken his blessings over this over this path and that he is connecting you to a blessed people that only not only is he connecting you to a blessed people but he is causing you to stand out in this hour there's something about you Shaniga. there's something about you Kiona there's something about you Kenya there's something about you Linda that that makes you stand out in a crowd that when you show up in a room the atmosphere begins to shift and change and hope begins to overflow into the lives of those you you have conversations with or you you connect with he said in this hour your hard work will not go unnoticed the things that you sacrifice and do the time that you spend and give up to go after that thing that he's placed on the inside of you that hard work will not go unnoticed he said, in this season, when you're on my abundant path, when you're focused on moving, when I say move, he said the provisions and protections are already in place. And that is his part, not us to manufacture or try to come up with it on our own. It is his part to do, to protect us and to provide us what we have need of. Your part is to gather those provisions and to remain on that path. He wanted to remind you last week that he doesn't see you as you see yourself. You may have disqualified yourself because you don't have the credentials that the world says that you need to have to be who he says you, you are to be. And he knows all about your past and where you come from and what you've been through. And all of those pieces have made you who you are today. And he wants to use those pieces, the broken pieces that healed pieces, the testimony that you have, the experiences that you have had with him, the encounters that you have had with him to bring glory and honor to his name and to encourage the women behind you, the princesses that are connected to you. He said your journey into your purpose and blessing is just beginning, beginning and your reward is waiting. Your reward is waiting. That is our message for today. And then it comes from out of the book of Ruth and it begins with verse 12. And I believe we will journey through to Ruth 17, I believe. So on your own time, if you have opportunity, um, please dig in and read the book of Ruth, um, specifically chapter two. That's where we are. We have done one and two. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. And that is my prophetic decree over you. That is my, my blessed decree over you, Kiona, as you continue to do what God has led you to do, that he will reward you fully. And he said, your reward is just waiting on you. It is waiting. What did Ruth do to earn or deserve this reward? So many times our flesh wants to earn and deserve the blessings that God has made available to us through Christ Jesus. But there is nothing that she did exactly other than he said she took refuge with the one true living God. In you taking refuge with the one true living God, your reward is already waiting for you. The provision, the protection is already there. I had to look up the word, you know, I got to give you your vocab. Sometimes we think we know what a word means, but sometimes it can get watered down. So a refuge is a place that provides safe accommodations. And that's what he's been telling us, that this, this new abundant path that you are on, the path that you are going down is one full of protection and one full of provision. It is safe accommodations and an accommodation is provision of conveniences or a better word is its benefits his word says um forget not all his benefits forget not all of his benefits his protection and provision is there for you in this hour and ruth chapter 2 verses 10 through 12 i'm going to read from the commentary it said that ruth's life exhibited admirable qualities she was a hard working woman she was loving kind faithful and brave 
that is my prophetic decree over you, Lakeisha Worthy, that you are a hard worker, you are loving, you are kind, you are faithful, and you are brave. You are brave, Kiona. You are brave, Sophia. You are brave, Diamond. You are brave, Kenya. These qualities gained her a good reputation. These qualities gain you a good reputation, but only because she displayed them consistently. God gave us originally when we started this group, he gave us three words, commitment, consistency, and transparency is the key to establishing um, godly relationships. And she displayed this consistency in all areas of her life, wherever Ruth went or whatever she did, her character remained the same. She had a good teacher. Remember, we talked about how Naomi was a woman of influence and a person of influence has a positive impact on the people that they come in contact with. It is to excite them in a positive way. That is having true influence. You can impact people negatively, but that doesn't mean that you are influencing them. You may be impacting them, but you are not influencing them. You're not exciting them. You're not encouraging them. You're not uplifting them. But you, woman of God, you have the ability to impact the community that you are in. You are able to impact your family. You are able to impact your coworkers on your job. Everywhere that you go in the grocery store, whatever it is that you're doing, you have the ability to have a positive impact on the world around you. Straighten your crown, queen, and wear it well. Wherever Ruth went and whatever she did, her character remained the same. Your reputation is formed by the people who watch you at work, in town, at home, in church. A good reputation comes by consistently living out the qualities you believe in no matter what group of people or surroundings you are in. You don't have to wear a mask. When you shine for the glory of God and, and you become everything that he has created you to be, you don't have to put on masks and hide who you are because there, there is a people that is watching you and they need you to step into that rightful place. What they did not say I want to draw your attention to is just as important what they did say about who uh, Ruth is. They did not say she was perfect. For my perfectionist, perfection is not required on this path. To be perfect is not required. What she had was, as we look into uh, our con her conversation with Boaz, as we look closer into that, she had an attitude of gratitude. And I wanted to let you know that in this season, as you continue to pursue and go after the path that God has blessed you with, that as you continue to seek and go after the it that's on the inside of you to give birth to it so that you manifest it, that your attitude of gratitude is going to attract your reward. She had an attitude of gratitude. How do I know this? Because she expressed her gratitude. In verse 13, it actually says, I hope to continue to please you, sir. She replied, you have comforted me by speaking so kindly to me, even though I am not one of your workers. So I want to put a pause in it and I want to talk about gratitude for a moment. That is one of the words of one of the women in our group. And that was what her vision board was, that God gave her the word gratitude for this year and that she is to um, dig deep and pull out all the treasures about gratitude. And she began to share some of those treasures with us. She shared with us that Philippians 4 and 12, Paul has said that he had learned to be content in all things. Contentment is a learned behavior. He said whether he's abased or he's abounding, whether he has little or he has a lot, no matter what his circumstances are, he has learned to be content in all things. 
That is having an attitude of gratitude that no matter where you are on your journey, Lakeisha, no matter where you are, Kiona, no matter where you are, Sophia, no matter where you are, Kenya or Kamara, wherever you are on your journey right now, you can learn to be content that in your now, when you focus on right now, you have all of your needs met. There's nothing needed, nothing missing, nothing broken. That in this moment, you are safe and secure on the path that he has you set on. Yes, you, Jenny, he has you set on the path where you are learning to be content in all things. That is where gratitude is birthed from. It begins with having an attitude of gratitude that no matter where you are and what he's doing right now, no matter what level you're on, even though you're expecting greater to come, no matter where you are, that right now you're satisfied and you are happy because you know you're on the path, that the, the reward is already there and it, you, it's waiting on you. <laughs> Also, enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't. That's Ecclesiastes 6, 9. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless like chasing the wind. Now, I want to talk about that for a quick second. I want to dig a little bit deeper because we are called to dream. Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. When you have a dream that, that comes to pass, when, when you have a desire that, and then all of a sudden you receive the manifestation of it, it is a joyful experience. You are happy in that moment. You, you recognize the hand of God in that moment. You celebrate in that moment. What Ecclesiastes 6 and 9 is saying is that just dreaming, just dreaming alone about nice things is meaningless. That means that you're only dreaming and that you're not, you're not taking faith moves. You're not taking steps to get toward that, that time, you know, that, that, that dream that you're believing him for. You haven't wrote the vision. For some of you, you haven't just, just simply write it down. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. He said, get your it on the outside of you. Get it out in front of you. Because just dreaming alone will not allow you to birth your purpose. To birth your dream is going to take you to move in faith. Your vision, getting it out, getting it either in written form or in pictures or whatever it is that Holy Spirit leads you to do is, is vital to you beginning to now make decisions and moves in alignment with your dream. Your gratitude attracts your reward. And Christ is saying to you in this season that your reward is waiting for you. The thing that you have been, been believing him for... It's already waiting for you. He's already dropped it down on the timeline. It's already been provided for. And he's just wanting to guide you and lead you into the manifestation of that reward. We look at verse uh, root 2, uh, verse 14. At mealtime, Boaz called to her, come over here and help yourself to some food. You can dip your bread in the sour wine. So she sat with his harvesters and Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat. She ate all she wanted and still had some left over. This is a prophetic word for you. It is a prophetic word that says to you, come help yourself. On this abundant path, as you continue to stay in tune and in alignment with, the, with God and what he has declared and decreed over you, he is saying to you in this season, come help yourself. He is promising you in this season and on this path that the reward is abundance. He's not going to just meet your needs. He's going to exceed your needs. He says, eat and enjoy till your heart is content. Eat and enjoy till your heart is content. Receive all the blessings until your heart is content. You can dip your bread. You can dip your bread in the sour wine. These are pictures. These words 
These scriptures that we're reading today, they're pictures to give you vision and insight into the plan of God to become more in line with the creator. The picture here of you can dip your bread in the sour wine is a picture of communion, intimacy, community, and closeness with, with our Heavenly Father, with our Christ, with our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. It is a picture of holy communion. It's receiving his broken body so that your body could be made whole. It's when, when your body starts to come out of alignment and out of agreement with the manifestation of the healing that Jesus Christ died for you to have. You can begin to declare and decree over your body to come back into alignment with his body. His body was broken so that your body, Lanisha, could be made whole. Receive your wholeness. That is physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, you have been made whole. Come into agreement with that communion. That the blood, he, he actually received the cup of guilt, shame, and condemnation so that you, Lanisha, could come out of agreement with guilt, shame, and condemnation. That you could be cleansed and declared righteous, Takesha. He has declared you righteous and holy in this hour, that you can wear the righteousness, the robe of righteousness well, that you have been crowned with righteousness. Remember, he's given you five crowns to wear, and one of them is righteousness. Come and receive the bread and the wine. Come into communion and community and intimacy with him. Be transparent with him. The next picture that we look at is, so she sat. And I'm going to pause right there. April Grady, so she sat. Lanisha, so she sat. In this spirit-led journey, it's not about inactivity. It's about you entering into the rest. This is a picture of rest. Her sitting is a picture of rest. Rest in Christ Jesus' finished works. You can rest, April, in Christ's finished works. That you can move and be guided by his spirit in a place of mental rest. Mentally, emotionally, you can rest and have spirit-led activity. You don't have to force open doors. You don't have to kick them down, but you do have to persevere sometimes because sometimes you will have opposition that will come against you to try to prevent you from birthing the thing that God has placed on the inside of you. You need to persevere, but you don't have to manufacture. You don't have to create and make it up. You can be led and guided by his spirit. You can sit in the finished works of Jesus Christ and just be led and guided by his spirit to do the things that he has called you to do. When you know that he has told you to do a certain thing, that you know that you know down deep inside that when opposition comes against you, come hell or high water, you are going to make sure that you walk into that opportunity. It's about being in tune with his spirit and the opportunities and the positions and in the season that you're in. She sat down and it's a picture of rest. Rest from fleshly works, but rest in spirit led activity. As you look at her in Ruth chapter two, as you look at her, she gleaned and she gathered behind the harvesters. There were people who were already sent out into the field to do the work. There are people who have gone ahead of you who have already done the work and they are leaving handfuls of blessings and opportunities on purpose for you to pick up. Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat. Jesus, our heavenly Boaz, will exceed your expectations. I know that you're expecting a certain reward, but I want to let you know that your reward is much bigger than what you think. And your, your, his, his goodness, his grace, his mercy, what he's giving to you in this season is ex exceeding your expectations. You are are going to receive your reward and it's going to be in an abundant measure and then we look at her the other picture is she ate all she wanted and still had some left over 
which is a picture of abundance. At, in this season, at this hour, he's telling you that as you pursue and go after the things that he's placed on the inside of you, this is a picture of abundance. That everything that you want will be fulfilled to the measure that it is overflowing. This is the seasons, season of abundant fulfillment. That as you step out in faith and you go after everything that your Heavenly Father has given you on the inside, as you get your vision out in front of you, He's breathing on it and He's going to give you a, an abundant fulfillment of everything that you desire. We're going to look at Ruth um, chapter 2 verses 15 through 17. When Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men, let her gather grain right among the sheaves without stopping her. There will be no stopping you in this season. You are going to birth everything that God has placed on the inside of you. Come into agreement. Let your amen, let, speak that amen. Say that I'm coming into agreement with birthing my purpose. Remember, I am your spiritual midwife and I'm telling you to push. I'm telling you that in this season, he said, go ahead, make the faith moves, follow my spirit, stay on this protected path, stay on this path that is full of benefits. Your reward is waiting and it's waiting for you in an abundant measure. And pull out some heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her. He is dropping blessings of opportunity on purpose for you. Let her pick them up. Now that's your part. He won't pick them up for you. That's your part, April. You have to pick them up. Every opportunity, every, every season that you're in, every position he's placing you in, there are being handfuls of blessings and opportunity being dropped for you on purpose. There's benefits being dropped for you in the handfuls on purpose. And your job is to pick them up, to glean and gather them. And do not give her a hard time. Look what he tells the enemy. You can't, you can't touch her. This, this is a protected path. All you can do, everything that the enemy, every obstacle, every trial, every tribulation, God has already declared over you that they can't give you a hard time. You can't do anything but glean and gather and become better as you, you persevere through every trial, every obstacle, and every tribulation. When you look at your trials and your tribulations, when you look at that, where as you try to go after, as you continue to follow his spirit, to get everything that you're supposed to get and to, to be everything that he wants you to be, know that your trials and your tribulations are food for you. They are nourishment for your faith. They, they help you to become more bold. They develop the experience with your heavenly father. You, you receive more love, more miracles, more signs, more wonders when you continue on that path and you persevere. He has already told the enemy he cannot give you a hard time. So this too that you're facing shall pass. But while you're going through it, don't waste anything. Glean and gather and focus on the blessings in these opportunities. So Ruth gathered barley there all day. And when she beat out the grain that evening, it filled an entire basket. He's filling your basket. As you continue to go out and, and be who he created you to be, as you continue to seek his ways of doing things and, and being a part of what he wants you to be a part of, he has declared that your path is dripping in abundance and that you will see a fulfillment of everything that he has promised you in an abundant measure. So much so that it will fill an entire basket. Do you have your basket ready? Are you gleaning and gathering right where you are? Right on the level that you are on right now? Are you gleaning and gathering? Are you picking up all the things that he wants you to, to get on this level? As he takes you into the next. Fill your basket. 
Make a decision that you're going to see things based on the way that he views them and not the way that the world sees them. That you are going to glean and gather according to what the, the word has said, the words that's been promises, that have been promised over you and declared and decreed over you. That you will see a, a, an abundant fulfillment of the things that he has promised you. Don't waste anything. Your part is to pick up every blessing, every opportunity, to recognize the season that you're in and the position he has placed you in and pick up every blessing that he is dropping at your feet. If you're a part of this group, this is one of those blessings. This is an opportunity for you to make a connection with some godly women who are making faith moves. Now, the Ruth group is designed um, it's for a place where you, you can come and get resources. You know, like if, if, if I know that there's a good word out there for you and you struggling with, you know, your faith, I'm going to say, listen to Joel Osteen. If you're struggling with getting over a relationship, guess what? Real Talk Kim is going to help you get over that hump and get motivated to go after what God has for you. Her, her, her saying is their rejection is God's protection. OK, so that you can overcome whatever obstacle you're facing. If you need help with grace and coming out of guilt, shame and condemnation, because that's the first thing you must tackle. If you are going to make any progress, you have to make up in your mind that sin is not an issue for Christ Jesus. He has taken care of it all. And that if you're going to flourish, you got to come out of guilt, shame and condemnation and fear and come into alignment with the grace that God has. And I'm going to point you to Joseph Prince with that right believing is going to be the foundation that you need to become everything that he has created you to be mama joyce meyer she gonna get you right she gonna help you keep yourself in check for the day you know so i the ruth group is designed for us to come together to encourage and to share and to uplift and to point people to christ jesus that we're not looking at each other, but we do enjoy the benefits of being in relationship when, with one another. So it is a place of resources for us to come and connect. But as I did the 30 day challenge, I knew that um, God was trying to birth something new, that there was going to be a shift in the change. And I didn't know what that was. And then just a few weeks ago, he told me that I am to start a mentorship. It's called AIM. All in mentorship. Are you all in Takesha? Are you all in Sophia? Are you all in Carlicia? Are you all in Jeanette? Are you all in Linda Jean? Are you all in? Now the all in mentorship is, is about us coming. It's actually you having a seat at our table. So the Ruth group is, is free. I will continue to put information. I will continue to do my devotions. That is our ministry page. It's a place of resources for you to be encouraged and to be motivated. But if you are looking to be connected on a deeper and more intimate level, you want to have a seat at our table. You want to come and bring your gifts and your talents and your treasures to the table and that we come together and we begin to do life together, to take this journey together, then AIM is for you. It's about you putting the great I, I in the middle of your AM. Who, who am I? It's putting the great I am in the middle of who he has created you to be so that you can have aim and focus. And that's what this group, the mentorship is about. It's about ironing, iron sharpening iron. We are coming together to sharpen one another, to motivate one another, to encourage one another. The scripture says that you need to be encouraged daily. We are bombarded by negativity and by the world daily. So you have to be intentional about being motivated and purposeful in your plan to go after everything that he has created you to be. You have to be. And AIM is about you getting a seat at the table. When you join AIM, you are assisting us with funding our ministry and you are partnering with us. And we're asking you to become a monthly partner and take the journey. Have a seat at our table. Bring your gifts and your talents and your treasures to the table. And this begins actually tomorrow. Or sorry, Monday, February 1st is the launch date. 
If you are interested in uh, joining us, getting a seat at the table, we are going to have more teachings. We'll be doing that via Zoom as soon as everything opens back up. If you're local, come on. We're going to be doing our, our events that we normally do. So um, it's at IWillRemainRG.com. There is a place where you can fill out a questionnaire and that you can sign up. It is $20.99. That is about $5 per week for the month. And you will be helping not only yourself, but you're going to help us be able to continue to have resources available for the Ruth group. If you like what we've been doing, if you, you feel like you have been blessed by this opportunity, we are going to ask you to prayerfully consider coming and having a seat at our table. There's room for you. We want to want you to bring your gifts, your talents, your treasures to the table. And we want to become more intimate in our relationship with one another so that we are taking this journey together. That you are not alone, but you have a whole community of women, queens, supporting you to become everything that God created you to be. So that's at IWillRemainRG.com. And that's all that I have for you today. Again, I am going to uh, continue to go live until I get um, in the Ruth group, until I get through the book of Ruth. I want to continue to expound so that you have a better understanding of who the Ruth group is and why we're called the Ruth group. It's about remaining unshakable through life, through anything that you're dealing with. Life can be hard. And when you don't have a support team, if you don't have people who are willing to pour into you on a more one-on-one -on -one level, you know, like I, I say this all the time, I'm not anybody's pastor. I want you to stay connected to your church and to continue to do what, what you do in church. But sometimes you, you just need to do something for yourself. You need to steal away daily for yourself to be refilled and to be refueled in your faith so that you can present the best version of yourself for everybody that you're divinely connected to. Your heavenly father has declared and decreed that your reward is waiting. Please don't be like Orpa and turn your back and go back. Activate your Ruth anointing and move forward with the plan and purpose that God has for you. Your path is already dripping in abundance. He has declared it to be so. And that's all that I have for you ladies this Saturday. I appreciate you. Um, you know, catch the replay if you missed it. You know, it's it, it's always an on-time word. I, you know, I will post it in the group. It will also be on YouTube. You can just subscribe to it there. I know that people from time to time take a break from social media. And if you still want to get access to our resources, we got Let's Talk Tuesday with KYC on YouTube. We got um, the Ruth Moments on YouTube. And then we have all of our devotions, all of our vlogs and blogs on our website. We want to begin to... Uh, take the people who have been committed to coming to like the Saturday moments and we want to pull you guys apart uh, pull you out of the group with with everybody and and give you a seat at our table so that we can begin to grow and journey together that we can become um, closer and more intimate with one another to pray for one another so that we can have that experience with one another and with him it's not about the person to the right of you or to the left of you. It's about you keeping your eyes on him. And that's what we want to encourage you to do. All right, ladies, I love you to life. Blessings to you. I pray for you daily. I appreciate you. I know that God is working in your life. He is allowing you to shine for his glory and honor. So have a blessed weekend. And I will see you on Saturday. Um, and for those of you who are a part of AIM, I do plan to do something um, February 1st for you. I love you ladies. Blessings. Bye.